This is the fourth in a series of training bites covering the control and customization of UVM reports. If you haven't already, we recommend you take the basics training bite first. This covers the basic terminology and functionality of a report and includes some important tips on message defines and basic guidelines. But in this training bite, we're going to have a look at action control, methods and command line options for changing the actions, what happens when a report is executed. So why may we want to change the actions for a report? So for example, you may want to suppress or hide all the reports coming from a certain UVC in your hierarchy. Or you may want to write all the reports from a UVC to an external file, what we call file logging. And this may help you debug the behavior of that UVC. We can write all the messages to an external file. We can send to the developer of that UVC to help us understand what's going on. So these are all the possible actions in a report, and the default actions are based on severity. So all of your reports are displayed, your error reports are counted, and a fatal severity report executes the UVM exit action, which terminates the simulation. And we can change these actions by report severity, report ID, and we can also change them hierarchically throughout your UVM environment. Now we're not going to have a look at all the possible actions here, only a selected number. We are going to have a look at the UVM no action. This basically does nothing. It doesn't even print the report. So it can be used to suppress reports of a certain severity, ID, or in a certain part of your hierarchy. Now, I don't necessarily think this is a good idea. I think instead of using UVM no action, we should perhaps set a, a local verbosity, a low verbosity like UVM none. UVM no action hides all of your messages, where if you do a UVM none verbosity, and again, we looked at that in the previous training byte on controlling verbosity, then at least you get the most important messages coming out. We'll also have a look at UVM log. We need that for the next training byte when we look at file logging, but we'll start by reviewing the behavior of the UVM count action, which increments the quit counter for the simulator. So our errors have a UVM count action by default, and we can set the maximum number of count actions after which the simulation will automatically come to a finish. Now the default max quit count is zero, indicating no maximum, so you'll need to set this to a value in order to use it. And the problem is, setting the value depends on which version of UVM you're using. If you're using UVM 1.1D, we can simply call set report max quit count and give it a value. However, if we're using UVM 1.2, we can have custom report servers. Therefore, we need to get a handle on the current server that we're using. We do this by calling the static method getServer from the UVM report server class. We can store that value in a handle of type UVM report server here, SRV, and then we can call the method set max quit count from the SRV handle. The better alternative perhaps is to set the max quit count via the command line. And we can do this with a simple command line option. Uh, UVM max quit count, give it a value. This works with all versions of UVM and is also really useful because it's dynamic. You can swap it in and out for different simulations without having to recompile your code. So a good tip is to use the command line option if you need to set a max quit count. Now we can control actions with both code and command line options. These behave differently, so it's worth refreshing how they behave. First of all, our code options make calls to UVM methods. You can apply these hierarchically using a path name, so a good tip is to put them inside of test classes, and then we can swap them in and out by switching between different tests. And when you have multiple hierarchical settings using the code methods, they conform to a last one in wins. So what we can do here is we can set everything below TB1 to be one set of actions, and then we can go in and set UVC1 actions separately because they happen after TB actions, they overwrite the actions set by the TB call. The alternative is to use command line options. These take precedence of your code settings. They're written in the topmost level of your UVM environment. The nice thing about these is you can dynamically change them from one simulation run to the other without having to recompile your code. So we can put these calls in run files, as we'll show you, for ease of use. However, when you have multiple command line hierarchical settings, these conform to a first match philosophy. So the idea here, if we set everything below UVC1 first, it is set and locked. And therefore, if we make settings to everything below TB, secondly, 
because the UBC1 has already been assigned, we don't overwrite those settings. The first match wins. So let's have a look at the code options first. These are method calls, there's three of them. They're listed in order of precedence from low to high. We can set the actions by report severity, we can set actions by report ID, and we can set actions by a combination of severity and ID. These methods come in two forms, non-hierarchical, which will affect only a single component, or hierarchical, which will affect everything under the selected component. And the difference is in the method names. The non-hierarchical forms don't have the underscore H-I-E-R at the end of the method name. And again, you can call these methods using a path name. So for example, perhaps from a test class, we can have an end of elaboration phase function. I can build a path name down to my TB test bench block, and I can set the actions for all of my info message, UVM info messages, to be both displayed and logged. So the action argument here can take multiple actions using the OR operator. So a good idea here, put the code control in your test classes so you can swap them in and out by switching between different tests. So let's have a look at the command line options. This is plus UVM set action. This allows us to change the actions of all reports with a given severity, a given ID, which are at or under a hierarchical path name given to us by comp. Now we can use the identifier underscore all underscore for either the ID or the severity arguments to this option, and that can be used to match all report IDs or all report severities. And we can use wildcards in the comp path name to make this set hierarchical, i.e. to affect all reports under a given part of the hierarchy. The action argument can take multiple actions as long as you OR them together without any spaces between the values and the OR operator. If you put spaces in, then the setting will be rejected and the simulation may still continue. Remember, because these are command line settings, if you have multiple settings which apply to a single component, only the first match, the first setting, is the one which applies. So here in my example, what I want to do is to stop the simulation on all randomization failures. And in UVM, a randomization failure is reported with the UVM warning severity and the ID RND FLD. So I call a plus set action here. I'm going to use a star wild card for the comp argument to affect all the components in my hierarchy. I'll set an ID of RND FLD and a severity of UVM warning, and I'll set two actions to both display and stop the simulation, and again, no spaces between those action values and the OR operator. Remember, good tip, put these uh, settings inside of your run files. If you have to type them out on the command line every time, then it's easy to make a mistake, and also you'll have to escape the wildcard character from the command interpreter by putting all of the arg list inside of quotes. So hey, that was a quick look at uh, action control. We're going to need this in the next training byte on file logging. We'll need the UVM log action. And further training bytes in the series will have a look at customization of reports with catchers and servers.